Recently, I was out scouting a location with a friend, and before we left, he took a photograph of me standing in front of the overlook where it shows where we get a beautiful view of that lake. And when he sent me the photograph, I wasn't all that pleased. <laughs> the first thing I noticed was a tree branch growing out of my head. So my friend did some retouching on the image and he got rid of the branch that was growing out of my head. And there's even one to the side that was kind of distracting. And yes, you can do that, but I think it's best to avoid that to begin with. And then you don't have to waste any more time in post-processing. When I first saw this photograph, I thought this would be a great opportunity to point certain things out and to go over these little things that you can do to correct this situation. But the first thing to do, I think, is to be aware of the situation because many times we're shooting and we're not really paying all that much attention to our background. I do realize that there's going to be times that you have to work with what you have. If you're a journalist, you're stuck in a certain spot where you can't move. Although if you can, many photographers know to get a good vantage point. So you have a, a good composition to begin with, but many times you're not able to do that. So you have to make the best situation of whatever it is that you're working with. But when you're in a controlled situation, like you're doing a portrait or a headshot of somebody, this is something very, very simple to keep your eye on and very simple to correct. So I did a special portrait session outdoors, even though we were in really harsh late afternoon or early evening light. And as you can see here, we have a pole or a little tower growing out of the model's head. And it's not quite so pronounced here because I'm using a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 Nikon lens and I had the aperture set to f4. So we have a relatively narrow depth of field which is making that a little bit blurry. But this is an easy one to correct because watch what happens if I crop it a little bit closer. And I just do a little bit of background blending slightly. And you can see we have a much better photograph than the one where the tower is sticking out of the model's head. And here's another great example where we have a post coming out of the model's head. And we have a distracting sign to the right of the photograph as we're looking at it. Very distracting and again, very easy to fix. On this image, I set the aperture to f2.8, so we have the background quite a bit out of focus, but yet it's still distracting. Now watch what happens as we move the model over just a little bit further, and then we get rid of that distracting background. What a difference, and it's so easy to correct. And on the next photograph here, you can see we have a sign growing out of the model's shoulder. Even though it's slightly out of focus, it's still very distracting and unnecessary. And watch what happens if we move her over just a little bit. It's gone, less distracting. However, notice on this particular image also, we had that diagonal line cutting through the model's head. And although this can be a little distracting, I wanted to see if we can improve upon this. So I raised the camera angle. And then here we have more of a solid background. And I think to me, this looks just so much nicer because you have your attention going right to the model instead of your eyes darting all over the place with busy backgrounds and busy lines. So by taking a little bit of time, look around, check your background, make sure you're clear. And it's just something that very, very simple and it doesn't cost anything to correct and it's gonna make a big difference in your photograph. So I think that is one of the, probably the biggest mistake that amateur photographers make. And as a bonus, there's another problem that a lot of photographers have with their images, and that is they're not getting them as sharp as they could be, and that's because of camera movement. Even though we have image stabilization lenses today, that's a huge help, however, if you're gonna be using a slower speed and you are moving your camera quite a bit, just that little jerk is gonna make a big difference. In fact, next time you're out and you see there's people taking photographs all over now, 
but you can just watch them. And then sometimes you see people as they're about to take the photograph, they'll press the button and they'll just jerk the camera as you're pressing the button. They go, boom, like, that's it, that's it. So the thing to do, this is also another easy fix. All you have to do, what we learned in the early days, just take a deep breath, hold it just for a second, press the button really smoothly, or if you have a camera strap, you can wrap it around your wrist, tighten it up so it's steady, almost like a monopod, and then press the button. This is just very, very simple. You can also lean against a wall or a tree. Simple things you can do to get great looking photographs. Thank you very much.